Hey, this is Paul Solt from Super Easy Apps. In this video, I wanna show you how to get started with converting a more complicated project from Swift 2 to Swift 4. This is a core data app, it's a to-do list app. This is the final version from a previous course that I taught. And I wanna show you how to make it work in Swift 4 and Xcode 9. This one's a little bit more involved than my simple tutorial, but I'm gonna take you through it. I was going through this and I saw a bunch of different issues. So I wanted to just do a video on how to fix them. And we're just gonna walk through this line by line, error by error until we get it working. And we might run into an issue where I have to use Google to search and I wanna show you what I'm gonna do if I don't know how to solve something so that you know how to solve a problem. So right away, it tells us that we need to use Xcode 8 to migrate. You don't really need this. It might be useful. I still haven't installed it. I've downloaded it just in case I need to, but that was a four gigabyte file and I don't think that you need to do that to get started. We'll find out as we go. So let's just hit okay and manually convert this ourselves. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on source control. So I'm gonna click in the top menu bar of Xcode and click on create Git repositories. That will just create a, a local repository in case I break anything, I can go backwards. And the Git repository data is right here, but it basically keeps track of all of the changes we make so that if we really need to, we can revert changes. So there's an option where we can discard all changes. So if you get to a point, you can do that. It's really helpful for going backwards. All right, I'm gonna switch this over to our iPhone 8 simulator. And we're gonna go and try and build the app. So right away, we have to upgrade to recommended settings. This happens with every version of Xcode. So if you just click on that, uh, it should make a little pop-up. I clicked too many times, I think. Just click on it. If you click once, that makes this pop-up just say perform changes. That just updates it for Swift and any changes in Xcode that the project doesn't know about. Next, what I'll do is I'll change our deployment target from 9.3 to 11. And that should change it for all of our other projects. So we see that it has changed here. If you have a developer certificate, you can just sign it so that you can run this on a real iPhone. All that requires is your Apple ID, but you have to set that up in the settings. The next thing that we saw a similar error as before, we had to set the Swift version. So I'm just gonna be on basic combined for build settings. And then we're gonna look down here for Swift, or you can search for it in the search bar. This is Swift 4. And now we're gonna get a whole slew of issues. So last time I got 12 issues. We'll see how many we get this time. 44. Some of these might be duplicates. Some of them might not be. We'll find out. All right, so let's start with the very first one. It's best to start top down. Unless you're stuck, you can go to a different code file. So this is a code file. Here's another code file. You can jump around between code files, but we're going to work our way through. So the code is a little bit more complex in this lesson than last time, and some things are changing. So let's go to the first one. So this core data thing has been renamed. What we're gonna see is a lot of these titles have uh, different name changes. So it's gonna tell us, okay, let's replace this long name with this shorter name. Okay, so let's just try fix it, see if that works. And let's go to the next one. See if we can just hit fix it. So it's adding generics. So I added this and this has been renamed. Execute fetch requests is now just fetch. Okay, so we're using generics again. Fetch has been renamed with the, the manage context. Again, generics, just making sure it's set up correctly. So this is just some of the things that Apple has changed in the past two years. All right, so this is trying to create a number. The number now has a value attribute, so we just need to hit fix for that. And then the last one we've got. So these are all pretty similar. So hopefully fixing those makes things work, but there's a potential that anything I did here could be breaking something else. So we don't know yet. All right, next up, we're in the core data manager. 
And in here, a lot of this has changed. So we're going to see that this line of code is going to change pretty dramatically. There's going to be a lot of fixits for this one. So if we do fix, NS file manager is now just called file manager. So they're removing NS from a lot of prefixes. The same is true with NS URL. So that's going to change. Let's go ahead and do another fix. So they got rid of this. Default manager no longer has, it's no longer a function. It's just a property. Um, and then we fix that and we should see another issue. Let's check out, okay, the other issue popped up. So we got four issues. So user domain mask is now a lowercase u because it's a an enum and that's a style guide change. So we'll just fix that one. We'll click on this again. It's saying that it can't convert from URL to NSURL. Well, I, I want to use a new URL. So I'm going to change this to just be URL. So that's a code change I'm doing. And that's going to affect other code probably, but let's just get this file working. The documents directory has the lowercase letter, so we'll fix that one as well. And we've got two more. Default manager is now default. We'll fix that one. And then we'll check this again. So this one has a, a pretty big name change. So this is a lot shorter than the mess that it was before. So this becomes just URLs. We can see that it's going to be a lot shorter. And if we just hit fix it, hopefully that changes and fixes things for us. So this is how you create a, a URL to the document directory on the iPhone, which we need in order to save the managed context for core data. All right, so next, This logic needs to get updated. So NS bundle became just bundle, so we'll fix that. And I'm assuming that this has changed. It's probably just main, and we don't need the parentheses. So main bundle is main. So it's getting a little bit shorter, and if we wait a little bit longer, we should see another error, potentially. So this has been renamed as well using the new renaming scheme. So it's going to be shorter and it's using the new style where we have a descriptive sort of name that's now part of the first parameter. So that simplified that. Next up, we have a new initializer. So hopefully we can use this one. Just hit fix it. And then down at the bottom, this is going to probably be a style change with a lowercase m. So hit fix it. And then down here, a new Okay, so here that we have an issue where this method doesn't exist anymore. I just hit uh, Command B. So sometimes if you press Command B or if you quit Xcode uh, and open it up again, you might see a different thing, especially if you fix something with the interface. But let's just focus on this. So so what I have here, Documents Directory is a URL. And they might have changed the API. Oh, I think it's it's now it's not called URL by appending. It's just called appending path component. So we'll fix that. So that's the new sort of style. It's just all of these are little changes that sort of add up. All right, so this one we'll hit fix. Cross our fingers. I'll just build again, see if we get any new issues in this file. So that looks pretty good. I've just set up the core data manager so that it's now working in Swift 4. We'll cross our fingers. I still haven't run it yet because we have some other issues. Okay, so now we're going to start with our table view code. This has also changed. Wow, there's a lot in here. Let's do the first error. It was, it's taking us way down here, but let's just hit the fix. So this has changed its names. It now has the underscore in front. 
and some of the, the values have changed. So we'll just go through and try and fix those one at a time. We know from the previous video that index path is, is no longer called NS index path. And so we'll just change that. In configure cell, we need to work with the index path. So this is just the way the API has changed. So this is my code and this is Apple's code that we're sort of making work together. Uh, the identifier here needs to be fixed. That's a change from Swift 2. And then we have some new initializers. So if that, if we rebuild, the init should now be describing colon. So we'll just insert that. Check marks have been renamed. So we can just modify these lowercase c, lowercase n for those types of things. Uh, I've got some errors up here still. So the prototype has changed. We should see an underscore once it's fixed. That is now updated. This has probably changed. We wait for Xcode to build. I'll just do Command-B to build again. Uh, what has changed here? So they've, they've changed the method signature um, with identifiers now part of the the method sort of right inside. So it's it's just shifted around some of the text. That's what a lot of these API changes have done. And that's the new sort of style for Swift. But if you've done Swift 2, there's a lot to change. All right, so we've got an index path issue. We can just hit the fix it and hopefully that can fix our code. And we'll just try to fix it down here. All right, dot delete. This needs to be a lowercase d, so I'll just make that change. Uh, apparently this one was renamed to just delete. If that fix it appears again, I can just use that to make the appropriate change. So manage context has had its API revised. And then there's two more issues that we're seeing. So it looks like I need the underscores in the front and this path might have changed a little bit. So I'll just let Xcode fix it. And then I'll do the same for this one. And I don't know if that fixed both issues. It looks like it did. This has been simplified and, and streamlined. All right, so I'll build again. Okay, we have errors at the top. So let's see what else is going on. So we got another table view method fix. Let's just fix that. And index path. Let's see what's going on. Okay, so it looks like it didn't quite fix the method. So we'll do that. Now it's fixed the method path. And then this one, if we build again, that error may or may not, this has been renamed as well. So cell for row at index path. So it's a little bit more readable, but again, it just makes it hard because we have all these changes. Okay, we're getting closer. Let's see if we can work top down up top. So I'm using the NS user defaults. It's now called user defaults. We'll fix that. That's just changing the, the beginning part. And then I'm assuming that this has changed to just something else. It's not a function anymore, it was. So we'll just get rid of those. And fix that, fix that. So now it's called standard. This one didn't update though. So if you use code completion, that can help you fix some of these issues. You can sort of see what they're supposed to be. This one has been renamed. We've got a lot of stuff that's been renamed, if, especially if you're manually doing this. It might be beneficial if you have a project this big to download Xcode 8 and see if that can help. But even then, it might not do everything correctly. So Xcode 9 might provide better assistance. All right, line 40. This has definitely changed its name. Fix it. Enumerate has changed its name. It's now enumerated. Time interval is renamed. I'll just rebuild that. Sometimes these code bubbles just disappear, which makes it a little hard to fix them. And what else? 
So it's missing title. So that's a method that I had written. Should be inserting something into the contacts, but Xcode thinks that I'm not using that. It's probably returning a value. That's just for test data. So I'll ignore that one for now. We'll fix this. Lowercase a for our enumerations, any of our options. Same with this one, potentially. Let's see what this says. Default. I'll just build again because I keep losing these errors. So this has probably been renamed just to add text field. So there's a custom text field that I've added to this controller. This one's probably been renamed present. So we can see that we're just streamlining a lot of this, but if you're coming from this old code, there's so much that has changed. I'll just change some of these that I'm seeing off the top of my head. So those are just more enumeration values that need to be lowercase. And then this probably changed and Wow, we're down to two issues. So it doesn't like my insert. So let's jump to this. We'll jump to definition and it returns the item. So I'm, I'm ignoring the item that gets returned, but it's, uh, it's automatically inserting. So I'm not sure. Um, If I wanted to do something with the item, I could do something with it. Otherwise, I could change the method signature. Uh, I don't remember why I had the, the value returned. It's sometimes useful in code. So I'm just going to ignore that for now. And let's just see if this runs. We probably have to fix some UI changes because I had to do that in the, the simple version. So I've got some to do's. I hit plus. We're going to get a crash. OK, so we're going to see this crash here. We have to fix some of our IB actions, which have also changed. So I'll go to our main storyboard. When I go here, it wants to choose the initial device view. Just go for iPhone 8. That's smaller. And then we're going to switch to the assistant editor. We'll hide this side panel and this side panel. Make this a little bigger. We'll make this automatic. So we should see the code file associated with it. And now we can click on the view controller scene to find our thing. If you don't see that side panel, click on this button to show it. And we need to fix this bug. So I've got some buttons that are hooked up, but they're not hooked up correctly because Apple changed this logic. So we are going to go to the add button pressed. You can see if I hover, it doesn't show that it's connected to anything. So I can reconnect it um, by just inserting a new one. So we'll just say add button pressed. And we can change this to action and hit connect. That will insert the proper name. We can see just right away what the difference is. It has this underscore and this is now called any. And we can just get rid of that. So that's a quick way to update it. I just deleted the old version. And then the search button pressed has the same issue. I'll do the same exact thing. We'll just drag one out. And this will be an action. And this is going to be search button pressed. So all we're doing is fixing these tiny little issues one by one. And we can get rid of the old version and this top. So we go ahead and do that. We can save it. Next, what we want to double check is if we have buttons, you right click on them and make sure that they don't have the old reference. Um, in this case, it should be pretty much, I think, the same thing. So it won't have duplicates. But if you see duplicates, just hit the little X button. And then what you can do is you can just reconnect it. And with the new signature, it should allow you to reconnect it. And then you can hover over in the code on this little circle. When you're in the assistant editor, you can see what it's linked to. 
So we'll hit play. And now we're seeing a couple UI issues that we didn't see before because we hadn't opened the UI up. And it has changed. I'm going to switch back to the single view editor. We're going to see that this frame is too big. That's because before we had like these amorphous, like huge shapes that were sort of big. So all I did was I grabbed this and I dragged it back to line up with this side. Then I click on the triangle TIE fighter and say update constraints. Uh, that top option, which is update constraint constants. So that's going to make this all go blue, which is good. And now we can hit build. If I hit plus, we have a pop up with a, a text field. And let's say play Frisbee. Got an ultimate Frisbee game tonight. It's going to be a late one. So we do that, we see that it appears, so it didn't crash on us, it got added. Uh, we should be able to search for something. I haven't done this in a long time. So let's search for Frisbee. Don't know if that actually works. I don't know if I hooked that up to code, but if we do a search, what I'm seeing in the console is it looks like it prints out the, the time. So that's not actually hooked up to limit the display over here on the left, but it is hooked up so that it shows us stuff. So why don't we do one that's got multiple things I'm going to add a new one. Let's add play Frisbee golf with Tim. So I'll just say save that adds. Let's do a search for Frisbee. And now I spelled it differently. So it might not work or it might looks like it did. So we see two results. So the app is fully working. We can add new to do's. We can search for to do's and we're getting core data values back. So that's how to convert a more complicated core data version of the app. This is the new code that will work. Uh, and if you want to get access to it, just click the links down below uh, the video and you can get the, the code. All right. I hope this was super helpful. There was a lot of things that we had to fix. Um, a lot has changed. Apple renamed a ton of APIs. And that means that you have to change some of your logic and that you have to change uh, all of the calls to the APIs. We can see how view controller changed dramatically or item changed dramatically that was dealing with core data. All the core data calls have been massively changed. And the core data manager that I have for just working with the, the bare bones core data was a, a lot of different changes for the file manager, for the, the creation, the bundle, just a lot of little things that sort of added up. So I hope this was helpful. Click the link down below to download the resources. And I look forward to any questions that you have. You can just reach out paul at supereasyapps.com. Thanks and have a great day.